quality infrastructure is that uh, when we trade on uh, stock market, a Reliance share uh, in, say, uh, Calcutta will cost the same as the Reliance share in Delhi or Bombay or Chennai. But the same is not in the case of commodities. It's the sugar is not the same in Chennai. It's not priced the same in Chennai, Calcutta, Delhi or Bombay. So that's the fundamental difference. And that difference makes us to not only do price arbitrage on the commodities only, but also there's margin on the commodity arbitrage that is there. So, and, and in the trading cycles, uh, I'll come to the finance later on, quality arbitrages are perhaps what gives the margin to a trader. And if you actually Google commodity frauds India now, it tends to go towards one word called finance. And 20, 20 years, 15 years back, if you had done commodity finance India fraud, uh, sorry, commodity India fraud, it again tended towards another word finance. <coughs> 15 years back, it was a uh, it was a bank that <coughs> was in, got involved in that, entangled in that. Two years back, it was an exchange which got entangled in that. And the common link that was there was the finance. And what really happened is that everybody wanted to transfer the risk like a financial risk and said that this is your duty and this is what you should do and whether this is written in the contract or not without going inside what has happened. But if you look at the unorganized financing in commodity, there is hardly any percentage of fraud. Reason? The ecosystem players are involved and they know the credit risk or the commodity risk that is involved in that. Take the example of Basmati rice. A 1509 <coughs> Basmati rice, which is widely available, it's a new variety, which is being traded. The price difference between that and 1221 variety is huge. Go to a bank and say that I want a rice uh, financing. He will say that give me a report of their average quality without understanding what is the difference between 1509 and 11, 11. If you go to the trader informally and say that this is what I, I want of financing, <coughs> he will have the pricing, he will know what quality it is and accordingly he will fund. So credit risk is mitigated to a very large extent by knowing the quality, knowing the variety, knowing the person who is born. But in case of that, they say that collateral, go to a collateral manager, collateral manager will certify, and most of the time, collateral manager will come with an exotic commodity, okay, about which bankers will have no idea, and say, no, 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 risk is mitigated by a collateral manager. That's not the way to do a commodity. Now, if you internationally, if you take any of the bankers who have been involved in the commodity finance, they have tried to go to the each level of the supply chain, backward integration, forward integration. But what has happened in India, we have just tried to pick up one segment of it, post harvest, no idea where it has, the, the commodity has come, where it will go, I will fund this. Book sizes have not increased. Every time people are talking about cost, if you say say that this variety needs to be tested, they will say well, how much it will cost. The reason is that, the very fact is that since it has not gone into the backward integration or uh, various stages of the commodity side supply chain, uh, you are always talking about the cost because the fixed cost is high you are not able to bring it average fixed cost as is the world out. Now coming to my slide, uh, this is what should be looked at, leave nothing to chance. 
do not have uh, processes or systems which depends on the people. Okay. Now, some somebody said about putting a uh, RFID code or putting a um, uh, barcode. Now, if you put a barcode or RFID, the cost of putting the RFID will be more than the the price will margins that is there. And forget about the uh, exchanges. There will not be any spreads that will be available if you start putting in RFID code and uh, bar tags because the spread will be totally be missing after that because the cost itself will be so high. Now, to ensure quality and quantity, <coughs> now, this is the price arbitrages that uh, I was talking about. Now, typically what, what is happening that suppose commodity is funded for wheat, for wheat brought by from FCI. FCI buys it on fair average quality. Whether it's a Durang wheat or Sharbati wheat, doesn't matter. When exporting, it has got specifications. The trader wants to arbitrage. Or buying from the market yard, say maize, with 16% moisture, but selling at say 14, uh, selling on the basis of 14% or 12%. It rains at the time of Ravi maize in Bihar, you have fungus aflatoxins. Banks fund it, they say that no, no, when it was bought, it was not there. The quality which has been certified was not there. Please remember, when the quality is certified by any agency, be it a collateral manager, be it a test house or an inspection agency, it is for a time, at a time, on a date, at a place. It cannot be carried out for three months hence. Please remember that. And banks always want to arbitrage on that. And that's the deficiency of understanding. Buying on an upcountry quality basis and selling at a road port basis, you are buying at upcountry, say at 4% broken and trying to sell on the, at the road port, uh, say at 5%. When you are transporting it, 5% broken because multiple handling is there. And so claims comes in and the bank says, why, why this is there? You had certified that as 4%, why it is coming as 7-8%. Uh, Moreover, when we buy, we actually don't know what has gone inside that. If it's an organic certified commodity, nobody has a history of whether the soil testing has been done. We found somebody uh, who was exporting soya bean, organic soya bean, and uh, we found a trace of a chemical called toro meat. And we found that this chemical has not been used in the soil. But banana had been grown three years back. Okay, and the traces remained in the soil. So the, once the traces are found, immediately the price of the commodity from organic to, to with chemicals comes down. Who takes the risk? So if you don't test it, again, you have those risks that is associated. Now it's not that People are not interested in quality, developing quality infrastructure, infrastructure. But what is basically happening, there's a very high cost of compliance. Cost of establishing a technical infrastructure for complying with the standards. And technical regulations constitute a major obstacle in productive capacities. Second, lack of institutions, infrastructure and human resources for providing confirmatory systems. The certification and the testing capabilities are non-existent or weak or have difficulty demonstrating that national certification and testing schemes meet international best standard practices. <clears throat> and third is the multitude, often contradictory. What is passed in India, perhaps not passed in European Union. What is passed in India is not according to, say, East African standards. So there's duplicity, there's multiplicity of the standards that are now, looking at the supply chain, basically, uh, this is the end. If we are talking about quality infrastructure and mitigating the quality risk about it, these are the things that we, we don't get into, like traceability, we don't get into the uh, field trials, we don't get into the soil testing part, we don't get into the supplier assessment, we just get into only one stage of 
commodity finance. And more we do, it's not said, it is not that you get into everything, but it's required that we get into some of the things. Basmati rice. I gave the example. A new edition, 1509. Difference between these, each of the rices, around 200 to 300 rupees. Nobody knows when it gets there. Take the example of, I will give you a case of Australian model, how they have done. Export distribution, what Australia has done is that when they are marketing these produce, they are not marketing as a fair average quality. They are marketing it for noodles, for breads, for sponge food. And this is according to the characteristics of each of the type of uh, wheat that is available. Like noodles require chewiness, bright color firmness, Bread requires high protein, good stability. Sponge cake requires low protein, weak and medium low strength, soft and moist. So th these kind of segmentation has been done over there. In India, we still are far away from there. But I think over a, year, over a period of time, we will do it. And about last, SGS happens to be the largest uh, inspection, verification and testing certification company. And I represent SGS in South, South Asia. We are there in the country since last 65 years. We started in the country from 1950. And we operate from 29 states, 7 union territories. We have 76 branch, more than 30 labs, 22 port operation, 3,500 people on our roads. And last I finished with Lakshman's cartoon, which says, I am hungry because the move has moved from hunger to food quality now. I'm hungry. If we had a computer, we could have ordered the food through website. Thank you so much.